Hello and welcome again. I have a, a 2005 475E. It's a 5L3P. The so first digit being the year model. The way to identify a 475 from a 470W is that the 470W only has the output speed sensor and uh, 475 they added a speed sensor here. Other than that everything looks similar but there's some differences inside of the unit as well. So we're going to do a teardown inspection of this unit and see what we can find. We had a uh, trouble going forward and I believe the customer said he was slipping in reverse as well. So uh, let's go ahead and get at it. Let's go ahead and turn this unit down and see what we can find. So the first thing, I'll get this uh, speed sensors out of the way, make it easier for disassembly. I have already taken the uh, uh, extension, the 4x4 extension housing off. Now I'm going to take the manual lever position sensor, or the, in this case is the digital transmission range sensor, or DTR for short. Transmission rain sensor. Let's go ahead and remove the pump bolts. I'm going to use two E4OD extension housing bolts that I have here extra to pull my uh, pump out. I'm going to use the seal puller. Okay, I'm going to remove these bolts. You can use a slide hammer or any uh, anything that you can think of to remove this pump. So here we have our pump gasket. This is our uh, complete pump assembly. This is the intermediate or second clutch uh, piston. I think I'm a little bit too close to the camera. But there you go, that's a second clutch piston. This washer here, it's also selective. And this washer, it's a uh, number three. Put that to the side. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Disassemble the pump. This is the pump stator. This is where the pump gears ride. It's nice and smooth. It's not uh, scored or marked. It might be a little bit shiny. That's considered normal. Now here on the back you have the ceiling rings. These two bottom ceiling rings are for the reverse input clutch drum and these two top ceiling rings are for the forward clutch drum. This is our inner pump gear. It's in very good shape. This is the outer pump gear. It is in very, very good shape as well. You 
can use a feeler gauge or whatever you want to do, but after doing so many transmissions, just by looking at it, you already know that this transmission is in good shape. This is the intermediate bonded piston. It has molded or bonded rubber to the piston. Here we go. This is our front pump. That's a front seal. This is just the pump bushing. There you have it. All right, well, sorry about that. We got interrupted. Uh, let's put this to the side over right here. Now, on this model, on late models, this is actually the return spring for the intermediate uh, piston. Put this to the side. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to remove the pan. So here is the pan. I'm gonna get it closer here. It's got a lot of metal in it. You see right here in this corner, all those shiny particles. Let me get a little closer here. That's a lot of metal. Let's find out what happens. This is called a conductor strip, or in other words, it would be on, on early models the wiring harness, internal wiring harness. But this is a plastic molded uh, wiring harness or a conductor strip it conducts it connects the connector outside connector to your uh, shift solenoids and lockup solenoid and pressure control solenoid now let's go ahead and remove the valve body To remove the valve body, we remove all the use of eight millimeter socket. We remove all the eight millimeter bolts. Here, I believe we got all of them. This screen right here, not all models have, have it. It goes right here. This is just uh, to protect the uh, EPC circuit. You see here, it goes through here. And this is the pressure control solenoid. And the front snout of the solenoid 
it's on this uh, warm track here. So it protects the debris from the converter falling in there or actually from the pump gears uh, finding its way to the pressure control solar line. And it also helps protect the uh, pump gears as well. Old gasket. Whenever you see the gaskets attached to the case like this, that means that this transmission got a little bit overheated for the gasket to bond to the aluminum. So we're going to set the valve body to the side as well. What we're doing here, we're just we're trying to find out why this transmission failed. And where is the failure? This is the third accumulator uh, return spring, third accumulator piston. I'm going to remove the one, two accumulator cover and remove the snap ring. This is the one, two accumulator cover. This is the one, two accumulator bottom springs. Now in early models, they only have the outer spring. And this spring here likes to break a lot. And uh, I believe that's why they added an internal spring with it. When this spring breaks, what you have, uh, you will take off in first gear. Sometimes it will skip second, it will go directly to third. And sometimes it will slip in second gear. And if you have that symptom, uh, Probably this spring right here is broke. One, two accumulator piston. It's a molded piston. It's got molded rubber to the steel. And this is the top one, two accumulator spring. I'm going to drain a little bit of uh, excess fluid from the case. I'm going to take the old dry servo out so we can uh, get everything else out of the barrel of the case. Overdrive servo. We remove the snap ring here. Now I'm putting my hand here because this snap ring here likes to fly off. I mean, it's there against the uh, pressure from the overdrive uh, servo return spring. So you want to make sure that this doesn't, doesn't go to your eyes or anywhere else for that matter. See what I'm saying? It's under pressure. You just got to be very, very careful when removing the snap ring. Sometimes this snap ring uh, breaks in a couple of uh, pieces and it's very hard to get out sometimes you have to drill a little passage on the side get your pick behind it and get it out all right now i'm going to flip this transition over here so you can see what's going on now we're going to remove all the internals this is our input shaft i'm just going to wiggle and pull on it Now this little thing here that flew off, this is the anti-rattle uh, spring here. Early models don't take it and I never heard this uh, clutch pack here rattle before. But if you had it in your unit, it goes at the 1 o'clock position. These are my second gear or intermediate clutches or frictions. You can see that they're in good shape. On the steel plates, I don't see no heat marks. So what this means is that this transmission was not slipping in the second. Okay, here, uh, here we see a little bit of heat marks on this uh, steel plate. So it might have uh, had a little bit of issue in second gear. Now this is the overdrive band. As you can see there, it's black in the center. It's a little bit red on the edges. What that means is that this band, this old drive band, is no good. It was slipping in fourth gear. Let's put that to the side. 
Now this drum right here, this is called the reverse input drum housing. It houses the uh, reverse input friction or clutches. It's in good shape. That's in good shape. Good shape. Here we have a bearing. Now these are the reverse input frictions or reverse input clutch packs. It goes in the inside of the drum. On the outside of the drum, the overdrive band breaks this drum for overdrive. And right here on top, you have the intermediate sprag. So whenever the second clutch or intermediate clutch supply, it also holds this drum. So this is like this is sort of sort of like a multi-function drum. Reverse input overdrive on the outside and intermediate here in the rear. I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, the snap ring. We're not going to reuse the snap ring. We're going to put a shirt sure kit. It comes with an upgraded uh, snap ring. Here's our intermediate sprag assembly, or in this case, this is a mechanical diode. This is a little bit different from the earlier models where you have rollers on it and you had, a, you had an outer race and it, it would, it would, on the drum it was a little different and it would break on the drum. You had, it, it was considered a one-way clutch, but this is a one-way clutch as well. And they call it a mechanical diode. It turns one way and it locks the opposite way, just like a diode does the current flow. And our culprit is going to be here in this drum. Here's another bearing. These bearings up here. This is the input clutch housing or the forward drum. I'm going to take the clutch back off of this drum and I'm going to show you what happened to this drum. It's very popular on 04 and nut units. So we remove the snap ring. See the color of this uh, backing plate or this pressure plate? That's how hot it got. So I'm going to give you a side by side comparison of a known good friction. See, you see that there? And a burn friction. See how this is nice and, and uh, light brown? And this is not even, I mean, it's just black. You see that? See how it flexes like that? It has no friction material on it. It's gone. It's burned. This is the rest of the friction, same way, all burnt. This bottom one has a little bit of a, a red on one side or brown with a little bit of a, a shiny black and on the opposite end it's completely burnt up. Okay, so this clutch pack is burnt up. Why did it burn up? Here's the problem right here. See this line right here? This drum split where the snap ring goes. This drum is, is no good no more. This drum actually had uh, it, it pop. Now the reason for that is probably the material that they used to stamp the steel to stamp this drum. Another thing that I that I think it's more uh, common sense is uh, valve body wear. If you have high line pressure, this could happen. So taking that in consideration, uh, this unit is going to take a shirt sure cure kit. We're going to correct that. I have another video of a 474 rear build. You can watch that as well. This video right here is just only going to concentrate on the teardown inspection. We already found one problem. 
Actually, we found two problems, but this could be the cause of that. So let's continue to dig in. Forward hub assembly. Another bearing. Put that to the side. Here we have a sun gear shell. Again, this bearing that goes in between the sun gear shell and the sun gear likes to uh, disintegrate. It gets caught up inside the planetary gear and it just destroys the whole gear train assembly. But to prevent that, we're going to install, even if this bearing is good, it looks in perfect condition, but it likes to do that. It's a, it's a pattern failure. So on pattern failures, what you want to do, you want to avoid it. If, if you're a shop and you're doing this for your customer, you don't want the transmission coming back to destroy it. It's going to come out out of, your, out of your pocket. So just to prevent that, we're going to put this bearing that likes to get destroyed. Brand new. Early models, the Sun Gear shell was all stamped steel. This is a different material. The reason for that is because of the added speed sensor on the side of the case. Now another thing I want you to notice is that this Sun Gear shell is already worn out and needs to be replaced. See the castellations here? And see the wear? I'm going to get a little closer. See that wear right there? This is where the reverse input drum splines into. This is just normal wear on the sun gear shell. You can reuse it, that's no big deal. But being like that, I mean, it's going to probably do a little clunking noise or, or drivability issues, and you don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and replace this as well. Now for our center support, I'm going to go ahead and remove the snap ring. Now in early models, both ends were curved like this, and they were positioned on this side, on this end, 04 and up when they added the extra speed sensor. They had to get rid of one end because you want the clearance for the sensor not to touch the snap ring. If the sensor would touch the snap ring, uh, you would have no signal. So this is the reason for one end being flat, uh, as the early models have both ends curved like this. Now we're going to remove the anti-clunk spring. This is the anti-clunk spring. It goes on the center support. That's for it not to uh, uh, clunk inside of the case. Now I did not remove the uh, low reverse uh, servo piston, so it's going to be a little bit tricky getting this thing out because the band is just partially applied. So uh, just bear with me a little bit. I'm going to get the whole planetary gear assembly out of this unit. Here we go. So that was easy. So here we got our center support with the big bushing. This is the added uh, notch that they made for the intermediate peak sensor to go through. It goes on the outside of the case. This is actually it. And it, it goes here and it reaches that uh, sun gear shell. Now I was explaining the intermediate uh, sprag assembly or the IO. This is what I was talking about where you have a roller and a spring. And then you have the cam loads like that. The early models, you had this cam loads here. And then you would have a smooth outer race. And you would have something similar to this uh, uh, low reverse clutch assembly, which that would be the intermediate. Uh, Roller assembly. 
and this is our old or our lower or our planetary gear assembly. You always want to check your clearances on the pinions, make sure that they're not chipped or scored. The low reverse band rides right here, make sure this is nice and smooth. Here's our low reverse band. It applies in manual low and it applies in reverse. I'm going to show you one thing here. This is where the low reverse servo applies the band and it holds the planetary stationary. This is, this is a brake band, right? So I'm going to get a little bit closer here and I'm going to show you at the apply point here. See that? This band is worn out. Even though it looks nice and red here, you might be tempted to reuse it. It might work, but it is almost to the metal. If you can see the friction here, the friction on the, let me see if I can get this thing here. You can see the friction and the, and the steel, and at the tip, you're almost at the steel with almost no friction. And here you have maybe like a sixteenth of an inch of friction material still on the band. And not only there, but where it anchors in the case, you can see that wear as well. So this band needs to be replaced. This band is no good. This is our third gear drum. Here's another bearing. Third hub assembly with two little bearings. Let's go ahead and take this drill apart. Take snap ring off. And as you can see here, all the frictions are in good shape. So basically, our reverse input frictions are good. Our intermediate frictions are good. Our third gear frictions are good. That's about it. In the uh, overdrive band, low reverse band, the forward clutch drum is no good. We're going to need for hard parts. This is a hard part. This is also considered a hard part, so you get uh, quoted for soft part overhaul. This is not included. This is not included. And this is not included. Just so you know. Here we have our all output shaft and uh, ring gear assembly. On early models, it used to have uh, about six holes right here on the ring gear. The ring gears, they're not interchangeable from 04 and up to 03 and down. If you do interchange them, you're gonna have a lot of problems. If you use this 04 and up on an early model, if you can see here the, the parking uh, gear here has been extended. And it's been extended because they increased uh, the frequency for the output shaft to speed. So the computer calibration is a little bit different than the early models. On the early models, you, know, you have the parking gear up to here only. This will be smooth and you would have some holes drilled on the ring gear itself. The frequency was lower. You would have uh, six or eight uh, holes for one revolution, depending on, I forgot how many holes it's got, but it's like either six or eight. And here you can see, I mean, compared to that, that's three times as much. If you use this ring gear in an early model, you're going to be in overdrive at 20 miles an hour, and you don't want that. So there you have it. I'm going to remove one more bearing. We always want to check the case as well for wear. I'm going to flip it over here. Let me explain why. You have three ceiling rings here. A bushing right here, drive shaft goes in here, the tail housing has a uh, bushing as well. This being a 4x4, I doubt it's going to be wore out. 
bought on two wheel drives, sometimes the U joint go bad and uh, the extension housing bushing gets damaged because of the U joint. This starts wobbling around like that and it creates a uh, wear where this ring drive, which is right here. You can see three shiny lines there. That's considered normal. As long as you cross your fingernail to it, if, if it doesn't have no grooves, if it's just shiny, that's normal. That's where the, ring, the ceiling rings are working. That's considered normal. So there we have it, 475, blown out forward clutch hub assembly, bolt drive band, no reverse, forward friction burnout, sun gear shell worn, and that's it. 475, thank you for watching, don't forget to uh, like this video, and uh, Watch my other videos as well. Like them, share them, do whatever you want with them. And uh, positive, positive comments are always appreciated. Thank you very much. And until the next one.